Hello, Owls, and welcome to ACT English for Owls week number 10. This week, we're going to tackle organizational and topical uh, topic development questions. These are those big questions that you tend to see uh, on the ACT in the English section, and they look like they might take forever. And sometimes they are a little bit time consuming, but guess what? More often than not, they're some of the easiest questions on the test. So let's take a few of them and practice them. But remember, these are longer questions with longer answers. They take up a lot of real estate on the page. They often refer you to different pages of the passage and different sections and insert this sentence here and go to this paragraph. And it can take a while and it can look intimidating, but this is always the, uh, these are always the questions with the highest percentage uh, of correct answers. So uh, there ought to be worth something you take a look at. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, we're going to do our normal method where I give you a chance to hit pause, stare at it, come up with an answer, come up with a rationale, and then when you're ready, hit pause or hit play, and uh, we'll see what we've got. All right, did you hit pause? Are you looking? All right, the correct answer is F, no change. Let's take a look at number at number 14 and see why. The question asks, given that all the choices are true, which one provides the most effective and logical conclusion to this essay? Now, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage because I didn't present the entire essay to you, but the essay is about crosswords. And number 14 that's underlined in the text says the puzzles and their cryptic clues continue to captivate audiences. That's a pretty generic and broad statement that probably captures the entirety of the passage. If you look at some of the answer choices, G, H, and J, you'll see that they're much more specific and probably don't capture the entire passage. Publication of the New York World finally ceased in 1931, says answer G. I don't think this passage is about publication of the New York World. Answer H says puzzles today often use clues that depend on puns and word plays. Well, that does talk about puzzles today, but when the first sentence is through the 1920s was the peak, peak, uh, peak time, that, that is not about today's puzzles. That's about previous puzzles. And then Jay, these puzzles are published across the world and in many languages. Again, it's general and it might be a good answer, but the puzzles and their cryptic clues continue to captivate audiences. It just seems like a good finish to a nice long passage. So F is going to be our answer. There are some other options. J comes closest. Uh, G is outright wrong. Uh, H might be in there, but really just the way that it's worded right now is perfectly fine to end this passage. Okay, let's try our next question. Hit pause when you're ready. Hit play. Okay, so we have to look down here at the box that says 19 because question 19 will align with box 19. And what it's asking for is for you to look at this sentence right here, the confederated tribes of the Grande Ronde created Oregon's first language immersion program to successfully teach the tribe's preschoolers to speak their native language, Chinook Wawa. All right, that's the sentence. And the question is, the writer is considering deleting the preceding sentence. So we're looking at this sentence right here. The writer is considering deleting it. Should the sentence be kept or deleted? Now you've got a 50-50 choice. You can keep it, keep, keep or you can delete it, delete, delete. So we're down to 50-50. The question is, do we want to keep it or do we want to delete it? And then why? Well, if I'm looking at the sentences before that, let me just read this. Alfred Lane III didn't grow up along the coast of Oregon, which is where the Silitz Reservation is located. He was born in 1957 in Guam, where his father was stationed in the military. As a young adult, Lane moved to the land of his ancestors to learn everything he could about the Silitz culture. So, so far, this paragraph is talking about this guy named Bud Lane who uh, was born in 1957, uh, and he didn't grow up in the Silas Reservation, but he later became dedicated to uh, learning everything he could about his culture, all right? And then we get the sentence, the Confederated Tribes of the Grande Ronde created Oregon's first language immersion program to successfully teach the tribe's preschoolers to speak their native language, Chinook Wawa. That sentence literally has nothing to do with the preceding text. And if you say he learned fragments of coastal Al uh, Athabascan language, okay, so he refers to Bud Lane. So this is about Bud Lane, and this is about Bud Lane, but this sentence in the middle has nothing to do with anything. So we're going to choose C, deleted, because it doesn't provide information that's relevant to this paragraph's focus on Lane's background. Your answer is C. 
All right, next one. Take a look, hit pause, hit play when you're ready. All right, folks, your answer is G. Let's take a look at why. We asked for question number 22, 22. So which of the following true statements, if added here, would provide the most logical link to the information about Lane's work that follows in the next sentence? So we are looking for one, two, three, four, one of these four sentences to insert right here. We're just going to copy and paste it right in here between the word teacher and he, right? Now, notice that the question says uh, they're all true. So no, you're not looking for a false statement. You're looking, not looking for a wrong statement. You're looking for the best statement to provide the most logical link. So our sentence prior to that says, Lane convinced Nellie Orton, a tribal elder who knew the language but never spoke it in public, to be his teacher. Okay, so the dude found someone to teach him the language. And then the next sentence is, he produced language CDs and created an online coastal Athabascan talking dictionary of words that had previously existed only in a few speakers' heads. So what happened between he found a dude to teach him and he created a bunch of CDs? Well, logically, we come up with G. For the next 30 years, Lane recorded elder speech and studied the coastal Athabascan language, becoming one of the tribe's most fluent speakers. That is a logical transition between he found someone to teach him and then he produced a bunch of language CDs. For the next 30 years, he learned the language, all right? That's a logical transition between the sentence that proceeds and the sentence that follows. But let's take a look at F, H, and J. More than half of the Pacific Northwest, approximately 30 indigenous languages are already extinct, and without direct preservation efforts, more would be lost. That might be a true statement. We know that it is, but it doesn't really connect what Lane did before and what Lane did after. We have to find the sentence that talks about what Lane did in between. G does that, F does not. Neither does H. Working with other tribal members, Lane helped to design a cedar plank dance house along the Silas River. Nothing to do with the dance house. This has nothing to do uh, with the, the sentence before or after. And then finally, J. Lane also worked closely with true other tribal elders, uh, Lauren and Gladys. Listen, I'm sure Lauren and Gladys are fine people, but this has nothing to do with the sentence beforehand or he asks or afterward. So <clears throat> the uh, sentence G is, is appropriate. Now, take a moment and pause. Like, how confident were you that the answer was G? I hope that you found yourself being, yeah, it's G. And there's no question about it. You know, you, you uh, on all of these, you, you're probably realizing, yeah, I can come up with a correct answer. It, it is not that the, the answer is difficult, but the question is difficult. It's just that it takes some time, doesn't it? So we have to recognize that we're going to have to balance the ease of the questions with the length of the questions, because they do take a little bit longer, but you generally get the right answer. Again, like I said, these long questions like this, uh, where you have to insert sentences or shift paragraphs, they are the most correctly answered questions on the test, but they take some time. So even those little questions that can be real short, you know, do you need a semicolon here? The students can struggle over those for a longer period of time, then they struggle over these big chunky questions. So just sort of be aware of where your head's at, how much time you're taking. All right, next, uh, let's do this one. Number 28, you're looking at the uh, including medical knowledge as the underlying text. So hit pause. And when you're ready, hit play. All right, the correct answer is particularly in their language. Now, here's the question. Given that all the choices are accurate, and that's important, we're not looking for any wrong answers, in terms of accuracy, we're looking for wrong answers in terms of placement. Which one most effectively leads the reader into Lane's message in the concluding sentence of the essay? Okay, fine. So the concluding sentence of the essay is, language maintains our view of Yule, the world, he says. He's talking about language is the life force of a culture. He's talking about language maintains our view of the world. So if we're talking about language and its importance in the last couple sentences, and we're looking for the sentence which most effectively leads readers into that message, then we're probably looking at something other than, for Lane, a unique knowledge is embedded in the tradition of his forebears, including medical knowledge. Well, what the heck does medical knowledge have to do with anything else we're talking about? So let's look at other answers. No change is not correct. Medical knowledge has nothing to do with language. Um, and then, and his granddaughter is one of the youngest members of the two to need to of that tribe. I'm sure she's a wonderful person, but she has nothing to do with this question. H, several of whom are still living. Again, it's not about the forebearers. It's not about his granddaughter. It's not about medical knowledge. It is about particularly in their language. All right. So 
Um, I, again, it looks like a tricky question, but ultimately, this, the question just says, look, look at the last two sentences, which uh, phrase would most accurately lead you into that? And then it becomes pretty easy at that point, or at least I hope you thought so. All right, now we get a, a longer one. And so what this is going to ask you to do, I have copied and pasted chunks of text uh, from out the story. So this is not a cohesive passage. This is chunks. Uh, number uh, A, which you see right here, B, which you see right here, C, which you see right here, and D, which you see right here. So the question is going to ask, do you want to insert this in point A, B, C, or D? So hit pause and hit play when you're ready. All right, so we have point C in paragraph three is the correct answer. And, and here's why this is just gonna be so easy. The writer is considering adding the following true statement to the essay. So again, it's true. We just have to figure out where it goes. The dictionary, that alone ought to be enough to tell you where this goes. And here's why. Gayal Budlane said to his young granddaughter, the dictionary is bilingual. That is not where you wanna put that. How about this? Uh, as in small pieces of language, but he longed to converse in it. Okay. Next sentence. The dictionary is bilingual, includes both the written and English translation of each word and a sound file of the word spoken by both English and Telco close to Athabascan, Otto Bilane himself. That is fine. We're not talking about language, but I maybe we put a thing about a dictionary here, or maybe we don't. Um, or how about this? Online coastal Athabascan talking dictionary of words that he had previously existed that had previously existed only in a few speakers' heads. The dictionary is bilingual and includes, oh my goodness, we're talking about a dictionary here, we're talking about a dictionary here. That is just a perfect place to put that sentence. Uh, and if we put it here, uh, resigned from his job at the local paper mill and began teaching at the Silas Valley Charter School. The dictionary is bilingual, not a logical transition there. Again, folks, I hope that you're seeing that these questions are relatively easy. Most students get most of these correct. It's the, the topic development and organization are the, are the two least worrisome categories of questions. They just take some time. But I want you to balance how long does it take you to wrestle with the semicolon or is it a comma or a colon or a dash or a semicolon? You know, those questions can take a while, even though there's very few words associated with with, with the question. These have a lot of words, a lot of flipping back and forth. You got to go find A, you got to go find B, you go find C and all that. But they, the answers are, are fairly easy. So uh, here's the deal. We're going to uh, uh, leave that here. I, I just wanted you to get a taste of these questions. And uh, if you have any questions, come see me. Um, look back at your previous practice test, find some practice tests. You know what? Do this. Find a practice test. They're everywhere. Uh, I can give you one. Uh, they're all over the building. But find a practice test and just flip through and look for the big chunky questions and see if it doesn't take you like not that long to get an answer you're extremely confident about. Okay, that's it for week 10. Have a great week and we'll see you next.